Hello everyone and welcome to the finals here at the 2019 PCS Open. We're at the Overas Disc Golf Park in Norway, of course, and it's been a rowdy few days, but we're here. We've got just seven holes left to play. I'm joined by Eagle McMahon, who's got a sizable lead. And Eagle, there's not really any the safari style holes, so to speak. They're, you're playing just seven straight up holes, but this is for the gallery. This is for the fans, isn't it? Yeah, for sure. Um, get Have all the players um, uh, be able to watch the, the top States, talent at Omega, the end. Third highest rated player in the world. Woo! Team Discmania. <laughs> Bull and Boulder Disc Golf Club. Please welcome Eagle McMahon. Yeah. The proper Norwegian. Welcome there by everyone as we're sitting on the new deck that was just built in the last few weeks. There's a hot tub and a camper directly behind you. Right here, I'm throwing a Simon Lazat S-Line Doombird 3. Next up, I believe we'll have Orvin. Langevåg Storesund. From Team Lettitude, Eivind Jarnes. And we have Yaron, who we saw during the first round, calling off the names, also sitting there on the deck or standing on the deck. Seifert, along with Brage, two of the uh, main tournament directors, movers and shakers, and superstars over here. Superstars is the correct term. Those guys <laughs> are awesome. Legendary status. Uh-huh. Applause! Yeah. There we go. <laughs> champion from 2009 the winner of PCS Open 2017 from team Dispania Avery Jenkins of course your team captain uh, I'd like to say mentor and and all around just uh, super great guy and traveler Avery he wears many hats he, he certainly does some even with his name on it I like it and he Trying to make up a little ground. He made up a lot of ground during this third round. And now he's uh, trying to see if he can go for everything here in the finals. It's a little bit of a scary roll the there. Please <laughs> champion from Team Innova and Shane Disc Golf Club, Peter Lindner. Nobody says, nobody says Peter that way. I mean, that's just incredible. You and I... <laughs> Shouldn't even attempt it. <laughs> Peter Lunde. <laughs> and he is 19? Does that sound I, about right? Yeah. It, it blew my mind um, when I was talking to him. P Peter's a really awesome kid, I guess I could say that. <laughs> uh, but he's um, he's already one of the best, if not the best, uh, Norwegian player. Three-time Norwegian champion. Uh, kind of a child phenom. Uh, I know he wants to get over to the States eventually to play. Um, he's got game. That is, is. that is definitely a, a fact. Draws a little bit of metal there. Uh, you know, and he's really has nowhere to go but up, so to speak. Of course, starting in this fourth place position, he's a stroke off of Avery and three off of Orvin. No one's going to be catching you. I don't think that's much of a spoiler as you birdie the first hole here in the finals. But... Uh, I, I'm ready for a show. I mean, everybody can kind of go put it all on in the line here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. And uh, the holes that we are playing are some of the holes that you can open up, kind of go big on. Uh, so uh, look forward to that in the coming holes. But we do have a, a good little race right here. Uh, Avery is going to be chasing Oyvind. And if you guys don't remember... Uh, or for those of you just tuning in for the, the final final seven, Oyvind sprained his ankle pretty bad on uh, hole 10 of round three. So he is going to be hobbling throughout this final. And we're moving over to hole two, a straightforward shot uh, that, of course, looks gorgeous. This was shot a few days before the tournament. And uh, thank you, uh, Life, and uh, it, just everyone at the crew for helping make this tournament the graphics, the the drone previews, everybody all hands on deck. Straightforward hole for you here, Eagle. For sure, yeah. Um, right here, just taking a FD3, 
playing it a little wide. Uh, giving it a bit of a run there. Just need a little bit more height. Avery taking kind of the high spike hyzer type shot. He'll be just outside the circle. Uh, I know he wasn't too happy with that shot, but he's going to be closer than he thinks. And what looks to be a pretty similar shot, maybe a little more height to it, but after some plinko, you might have CTP there by Orvin. Stays out of the water that... The water is just casual. Sometimes they do play it out of bounds, but uh, not not for this event. Peter going with a, a fairway driver of sorts. Kind of low. He'll be around the 40, 45 foot mark. And what's incredible to me, and of course they're used to rain and they're used to cold being in Norway but just the amount of clothing he's got on and how it doesn't impact his putting stroke at all there. Uh, I think that's one of the most impressive components to this, uh, you know, who's out here playing in a, as this battle unfolds. Yeah, that was a, a great putt by Peter, as well as a good observation by Terry. Great putt by Avery's there. Um, these guys, a lot of the time, when they want to go play disc golf, they don't have the, the real luxury of going out in shorts and a t-shirt. Uh, so they're kind of forced to adapt to playing with clothes on. And, you know, if, if you can do that, um, it's, it's almost like training. As soon as you take the clothes off, then you feel like uh, you can move freely and you'll have even more of a competitive advantage. So we've seen three birdies and then you're tap in for birdies. So you guys are, are doing just what we want. You're putting on a little bit of a show here. Star frame on hole two and uh, just five holes left to play. Yeah, we'll jump from uh, hole two to hole 14. Uh, this par four is 551 feet, 168 meters. Um, the way this hole shapes up, it it is 551 feet, which is a huge hole. But um, for some of these guys, that is a reachable distance. But the way you have to throw it is a hyzer flip angle. And that just makes it uh, pretty difficult to, cross, right? to get up there. Avery joking with you about if you got to cross and over the OB or not, easily clearing it. Avery is master's ah, age, but <laughs> he doesn't he doesn't show for it with the distance he still has. Obviously, one of the longest say? throwers in the game. Avery and I actually just celebrate birthdays a, a few weeks apart from one another, and uh, what he's been able to do as he's been traveling around the not just the country, but of course around the world and continues to be such an amazing ambassador. Uh, it, it's been incredible to see throughout his entire career. Like you said, even though moving into that master's age, and here he is hanging with the young guns. Yeah, what Avery does is uh, is very impressive. He's he's truly made uh, a life out of disc golf. And he still, he still plays, competes at certain events, but um, like you're saying, he's a great ambassador, course designer. Uh, father he wear he, he wears many hats and he he does it all very well and peter stands still eh, maybe a little off his mark avery here looking at a forehand i believe that that he's throwing a in of a cayman there which is a, a beadless overstable mid-range And we see just two strokes separate Avery and Oyvind, and also then two between Avery and Peter. All right, this is your fourth time with this hole. Can you approach it a little better? Okay, I like that one. Yeah, uh, it didn't go in, <laughs> but it was definitely it was definitely the best so far. <laughs> Peter just a bit high. Something that, even though Peter missed that putt, something that really impresses me is his um, his putting ability. Uh, I'd compare his putt to something like Nicolo Castro. He gets real low and throws a high lofty putt, but the his effectiveness with it is very incredible. And we may see it. 
You may even see him throw a few spin putts, which he's also very good at. So uh, a very uh, uh, well-adapted player to uh, whatever uh, way he needs to putt. Yeah, which is incredible. You really see him kind of pull between his legs as he's coming through on that, on his, more of his pitch putt. And then, like you said, if he needs to switch to a spin putt. And there's, I feel like there's very few individuals. Ricky Wasaki always comes to mind as someone that could switch it up even mid-round kind of like a Paul Ulibarri as well. For sure. Now on to hole 15, 610 feet, 186 meters. This is a par four. Uh, this, again, is just a completely picturesque hole. This green is incredible. You got the basket on top of the tractor. Normally, the, the best play is to throw a layup uh, with either an overstable sidearm or fairway driver, but I'm... I'm deciding to go a little bit more aggressive. Uh, I do turn it over a little bit too much, but this grass is so thick, so it kind of keeps it in place where it hits. I think Avery, Avery is going to be going for the more the more conventional uh, play on this hole. Yeah, Avery doesn't have uh, the luxury that you do of having a double-digit lead, so to speak, and we find him uh, that looks to be in the hazard area. Yeah, that correctly. And Oyvin pulls it and just misses everything, did <laughs> finds himself in the sweet spot. Again, he he didn't feel like he was content with that shot and he, after it was almost perfectly placed, Avery's like, "Yeah, what was wrong with that again?" <laughs> I know you guys won't get to see Peter throw too much on this, but uh, he's very reliant on his backhand. He has uh, really great control, uh, really knows his angles very well, and uh, demonstrated that on that shot. A standstill approach, and oh my gosh, I didn't. I knew it was <laughs> close when I was there, but that stake, it kept him out. He, there was a good chance he would have crossed in if um, that stake wasn't there. And Peter's just so smooth. I know we were just talking about his putting stroke, but he just, you know, almost like a ballerina. It just feels like it's so fluid and so effortless. And here you are filming Avery. Got to get uh, some footage for the vlog. <laughs> And Avery sticking the landing, not too much ground play there, which is great. Of course, it's been somewhat either damp or rainy for the first, you know, for the two days that you guys were playing. That one probably a little closer than even you realized. Yeah, I kind of wanted to see if I could um, recreate round one, but um, actually put it in the basket. But uh, <laughs> that, that 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 was a good play by. Uh, that was. Oyvind, just pitching it up there. And yet another birdie. <laughs> You're not letting off for anything, nor should you. When's the last time that you can recall having an 18-stroke lead over uh, a handful of other 1,000-rated players? That's a great question. Um, it's been a while. <laughs> uh, the, you, you don't really get that opportunity when you're playing uh, a lot of the the pro tours and NTs just because the, the level is so high. I'd have to say probably back in 2016, I played uh, uh, the the Solitude event in uh, Utah, Utah mm -hmm. and, uh, and I was playing with Philo, Jerry Eshelman, Eric Oakley, all 1,000-rated players, and uh, I believe I had about a an 18-stroke um, lead at the end of that event. Spoiler. <laughs> yeah, from, two, from from three years ago, exactly. Well, uh, Avery and Oyvind now within a stroke of one another, and we've just got a few holes left to play, 16 through 18. Yeah. Um, what we have here is just a 354-foot par three, and if you watch the previous rounds, we can't, we can't get over this green. It's just it's so beautiful the way it shapes up. And from the tee pad to, of course, see the fjords. This is a bit of a misfire right here, but there is a route. 
Yeah, because that's what you need uh, when when you're sitting on a 19 stroke lead. You need a little bit of luck too, right? Yep, exactly. <laughs> Peter's got something sharp edge there. A really good play on this is to go with a little bit faster disc than you, you think. Because uh, if you look behind the basket, there's not that much. Oh, that so there's nowhere to really go. So you'll hit behind there and you'll have probably inside the circle pot as long as you can just get distance. Yeah, almost a little bit of a backdrop. And the whole place slightly uphill, you know, maybe just by a few feet. So at 354, oh. put a little bit more on it. And that was a solid run there by Oyvin. Avery forcing the throw from high up on his body. <laughs> Just laying it under the basket. Not much to say there other than just a solid putting stroke and uh, making it look pretty easy. And uh, everyone else should uh, be able to clean up from where they're at. Oyvin had a really great drive. He won't be left with uh, no more than probably uh, five, ten feet, if that. Yeah, he... Pretty close. You, you see him somewhat hobbling around just a little bit, but uh, at least his putting stroke there looks good. And Avery, who's, uh, I guess if you went back and looked at all the numbers, I feel like he's birdied, you know, six out of the last eight holes or so that he's played. He's just been absolutely just terrorizing things, making his move, and that one he's left out of the party. So we move over to 17, the second longest hole on the course. Yeah, this one, um, we got a lot of out of bounds and hazard. Uh, the strip in the middle there, uh, you don't see it, is... Um, uh, defined by the red stakes, which is hazard, and all the white stakes are actual out of bounds. So right here, I'm deciding to go big. I I was very happy with this shot. I get a full flight and that late pan, and um, I felt like that was one of my better drives of the event. Well, and here off in the distance, you saw a few of the umbrellas up, and that's really been the theme over these two days and these three and a half rounds is umbrella up and gets wet. Uh, five minutes later, you take it down and five minutes later, you put it back up again, a little bit of everything. I will say for the third round and um, this final, we, we have been very fortunate. This is kind of the first uh, uh, drizzle we have seen for the day so far. And we're really, I mean, this is great and all, but we're really just a few hours away from the epic Saturday night PCS party. And you know that's on the mind of everyone else. Maybe not the four of you yet, but everybody else that's out there is thinking about the party that's just around the corner. That, that, that's, I want to say disc golf is the main reason everyone comes here, but that that's easily a close second. <laughs> Uh, the party's certainly not PDGA sanctioned, uh, as uh, that's going to be kicking off in a little while. Meanwhile, yeah, Peter. If it, if it was, a lot of people would be getting DQ'd. <laughs> and now, uh, just as we're closing things out, also, you spent how many days in Norway when it was all said and done uh, as part of this event? And then uh, some travels and uh, clinics? Um, I don't. I don't know the exact number off the top of my head, but it was uh, maybe a few days over two weeks. Uh, ran uh, seven clinics, played this event, got some sightseeing in. Uh, took my dad, took my dad, which uh, made it his first time to Europe. So it was it was a good hybrid between vacation and work, but all in all, it was just uh, an incredible time. It really was, and as you were doing that, putting in a few extra hours on the clinic side. Uh, I was very blessed to be with Seifert and Brage and Avery for the next four or five days. And we traveled all along the south, uh, the west coast and the south of Norway. And it was one of the best experiences of my life. And Avery stepping up, still taking the par with a solid putt. 
And he's trying to close things out. Avery, a previous PCS Open champion himself. Peter just showing that very strong putting stroke. And it just shows there's really no right or wrong way to uh, develop the way you putt because uh, what he developed is um, it's not the most orthodox, but as you see, it's um, very smooth and it, it works for him. And he's, he's found a lot of confidence and a lot of success in it. You're going to tap in for another birdie. That's going to put you to 32 under par. Yeah, as we wind down here, I just want to shout out all the guys at the PCS, Brage, Sievert, uh, Jordan, um, just for running a all-in-all -all incredible event. Uh, it's not scheduled quite yet for next year. They're kind of trying to figure out a date, but any of you guys watching, if you're looking for a credible experience um, outside the U.S. or if you're in Europe, I can't recommend this event enough. Uh, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I will echo all of that and then some. I totally agree with you. Yeah, and, and I wasn't even playing. It was just so incredible to witness and experience this entire weekend. What we have here is the final hole, 354 feet. Everyone's um, giving their final right, fist bumps playing, guys. before ending this event getting ready to enter Valhalla, which is the Viking <laughs> dining hall. I'm throwing one last rip with a disc that I probably shouldn't be throwing way too hard. Uh, it just spits out of bounds. And right there, I had a little bit of pressure on myself because um, I've birdied every hole of the final so far, and uh, I kind of wanted to keep it perfect, <laughs> and unfortunately, I, I won't be able to do so. So after the double bogey on the previous hole, Oyvin moves down to 10, and you see there's a three-way tie as Avery parked it, but a three-way tie for second place at this point. Yeah, it's... The, I, I'll spoil a little bit right here. The, the payout is massive for this event. Considering it's a, a C tier, um, it, it, it doesn't reflect the, the sanctioning on how good the payout is. Even though it is a little bit different, they, they pay out only the top 10 for the division, so it is structured a little bit differently. But all in all, all these putts right here are, are very meaningful. Yeah, worth hundreds of dollars. And just to also, as we're watching Peter, uh, and he doesn't connect, but uh, just to put it in perspective, at this very moment, on the other side of the world, we have the uh, event taking place at Smuggler's Notch, the Green Mountain Championships. And I think ultimately, Paul Macbeth took that down, if I, if I recall, for about $3,000. And you're trying to cash a $3,500 check at this C tier in Norway. <laughs> Pretty incredible. Yeah, it's, it's truly amazing. And... Uh... I, I was very happy with um, my play throughout the weekend. Um, got got to play a amazing course, a beautiful country with some amazing views. Uh, I, I really couldn't be happier with the experience. I echo all of that, and Peter's going to put in for the par. He will ultimately finish in third. Avery's going to put in for the birdie. Orvin will take the bogey. Thank you for joining us, everyone. I catch up with Eagle just moments after he's tapped in. Thank you to the PCS crew, Brage, Seifert, and Yuran. Looking forward to seeing you guys in 2020. The winner of PCS Open 2019, Eagle One more applause for Eagle McMahon! Ah, lift the lock, turn it in. Oh, skull.
Oh, at this, so at this pace, I'm not going to make the party. Oh, at this pace. Yeah. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers, guys. Cheers, fellas. Yeah, I'll be man. Can you stand up here so he won't yeah. take a picture? Basket? Yeah, with the basket, yeah. I'm the disc golf guy, and that was my video blog. First question is, should we do this in Norwegian or in American English or something else? Uh, let's stick to English for this one. How good is your Norwegian? Uh, I know maybe two or three words. All right, that's <laughs> one or two more than I am. Well, uh, we're joined here, of course, by Eagle McMahon, dominating the tournament here at the PCS Open, 21 strokes. Uh, you had a pretty solid performance out here all weekend, didn't you? Yeah, for some reason uh, I decided to turn it on uh, when when I'd say the temperature drops below 60 degrees and I can put on long underwear for some reason, <laughs> I feel very comfortable in that weather, I don't know. Uh, I'd like to see the st statistics for my long underwear rounds <laughs> uh, opposed to my non-long underwear rounds. Um, I'm guessing you've got fans out there that probably will run those stats for you. It, it's hard to tell though. It's hard to tell when I'm wearing them. Um, but yeah, well, all around really solid. I uh, love the course. Uh, I played uh, a little bit conservative for probably Probably the first two and a half rounds, but then uh, once I knew I had a pretty solid lead, I, I started having some fun and uh, the aggressive shot started paying off, so I was able to take off a little bit more. Yeah, but you couldn't even get one of the long drives out there on hole number 15 yeah. or 16, could you? Yeah, shout out to Hoken. <laughs> he absolutely crushed the shot. Um, I got a hold of mine pretty good, and he still had me by a good probably uh, 40, 40, 50 feet. So. But, I, uh, it didn't matter. When yeah. it's all said and done, you come in with this phenomenal score. And uh, what was it like coming here, playing in Norway? I know you've been doing some demos and clinics, but what's it been like coming here and then playing so well at the tournament? I mean, it is just absolutely incredible, just for so many different reasons. Uh, you have, I mean, mainly, you have a fjord behind you, and when you're... <laughs> When you're growing up in the U.S. and you hear about Norway, you think, oh, that's just like a faraway place that you'll never go to. And then to, to play disc golf on one of the most amazing uh, properties I've ever seen is uh, absolute uh, pleasure. And then the, the hospitality is incredible between um, Brage, Sievert, and Joran, the, the PCS guys here. It's, uh, it's truly incredible, and I, I hope to return uh, next year. Well, there's been a very short list of champions here. Avery Jenkins, a teammate, somewhat of a mentor back mm -hmm. in the day. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, you know, probably had a lot to encourage you to come here, and I'm, I'm guessing you're, uh, you're liking his advice right now. His advice is, uh, is very good. All right. Well, as a previous PCS champion, he knows what's going on. The legendary party is here on Saturday night. You may or may not see some videos from that. That might not be appropriate. Eagle, anything you want to say to everybody as we close it out, though? Uh, just the same as always. Thank you, Dismania. Thank you, Grip. Um, and uh, Tus and Talk. I'll go with that. All right, Eagle McMahon, your champion here in Norway. Thank you to everyone here at the PCS Open. Sweet. Nice work, man. Yeah, thank you. Oh, hand warmers, too. I feel oh, yeah, that. There that, you go. That was, that was a trick. <laughs> nice. He's prepared. Oh, yeah. Thank you very much.